Hello and happy Monday. Welcome to another Squadcast. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway and I'm joined with Aaron Caboose Coast and Stephen Vivari. And every week, the three of us actually converse about all the debatable things that we are talking about as a gaming community. Uh, firstly, before we actually get started, I want to actually welcome Steve as our third chair. Uh, you're going to be joining us permanently. So, welcome to the crew. Thank you. I'm so excited. Uh, it's been a blast so far, you know, hanging out with you guys, talking everything about uh, video games and, you know, the nerdy stuff we love to talk about with our community. So just to be here on a regular basis, it's it's a great feeling. So thanks. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you here. It's going to be a blast. Um, of course, on the Squadcast, if you are not new here, um, and if you are new, well, and just didn't realize, didn't click in your head, um, we actually have friends on the Squadcast every week. And our friend mm -hmm. this week is Malik. Uh, Malik is actually a writer on our website, squadstate.com. How you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. It's been a busy, busy weekend. But other than that, great. <laughs> Uh, and you're all equipped in your Genji <laughs> jersey there. I am. I am. We qualified for the Valorant first strike, so I'm excited. We lost the first week. Yeah, that was devastating. So this is it's a big deal, you know, Valorant's first ever like premier tournament and Genji's gonna be in it. So I'm excited. Showing <laughs> that Genji pride. I love yeah. every minute of it. Uh chat, if you're watching, here's a quick rundown on what you could expect this episode we're going to be talking about the playstation 5 launch week it's all about playstation this week we're going to talk about the lineup its availability obviously miles morales caboose is really yep. excited about that one i'm also going to be talking to another friend of ours a uh, next gen player who we're going to be chatting about the playstation 5 and its user experience in comparison to its previous gen of uh PlayStation launches. As well, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about haptic feedback, controllers, and player emergence. So there's lots to cover about the PlayStation 5. Kaboom's showing off his controller right there. <laughs> and so if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We would love to answer any questions that you have if you have not gotten your hands on it, or if you have gotten your hands on the PlayStation 5, let us know what your experience is. And uh, we could uh, just communicate back and forth like a good old conversation. All right, let's get started uh, with the PlayStation 5 launch. And uh, Steve, I believe you have a lot to say about this one. Uh, yeah, uh, just so to kind of start off, where we're sitting right now, I mean, we're recording this on the 16th of November. PlayStation 5 has already launched in some territories, obviously uh, North America, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Singapore, South Korea. On the 19th, it uh, opens up to the rest of the world. Uh, right now, Sony hasn't released any firm numbers on sales, uh, but that's kind of expected. I'm sure more figures will come out once the worldwide launch happens and then everyone can have the, uh, the console in their hands. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of availability, I'm sure as you've seen, it's been really hard to track one of these suckers down um, unless you pre-ordered months in advance. Uh, even if you pre-ordered, postal companies are still struggling to catch up and fulfill those orders. I mean, I, I look at my Twitter feed right now and people are still waiting on theirs from last week. So kind of an indicator on where we're at right now. But I, I mean, the big focus I want to talk about right now is the launch lineup. I feel like the PlayStation 5 launch lineup is really strong. And possibly, and I want to talk to all of you guys and even hear from our community about where they feel, but I feel like this is Sony's strongest launch lineup. Um, just to kind of go through it, uh, to give like a brief list, we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Astro's Playroom, which is a game that's built into every console, Bug Snacks, Call of Duty, Black Ops Cold War, Demon Souls, uh, Dirt 5, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, Godfall, Ma uh, Madden NFL 21, Miles Morales, obviously, Sackboy, Big Adventure. And then just before the release, there was obviously Watch Dogs 2, but I threw it in here because it's launch window. I feel like it's appropriate mm -hmm. to throw it mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I feel like that's really strong and really a diverse launch lineup as well. You kind of have games that speak to all matter of players. So I just want to know your guys' impressions on it and how you feel about the launch. I mean, I guess I never really thought when when I hear launch lineup, I'm usually thinking like the exclusives. But I guess that's sure. true. That like exactly. Any game that's, exactly. Any games that's coming the next gen would technically be considered a part of the launch lineup for mm -hmm. the console. Um, and I mean, looking at that, like if we're including cross platform games, um, especially in comparison to Xbox, that's lacking something like a Halo or, or any sure. really exclusive. 
yeah, PlayStation has the stronger launch lineup because of the fact that you can get Miles Morales on the PS5 because you have something like Astro's Playroom, Demon Souls, all that stuff. Uh, and it is very strong. I would, I would honestly, I think I agree that it probably is the strongest we've gotten out of any console generation. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know, actually. I'm, I'm 50-50 on that because, like, Miles, you can play on PS4. Sure. Is, is Demon Souls available on PC now? or it's Not going yet. To, you know? No. Okay. Uh, so, like, that's coming to PC soon. Um, and then other games are cross-platform. But yep. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to look at the, uh, like, the previous generation la launch lineups. But it's a strong one. No doubt about it, it's a strong one. You got a real, you got a good lineup of games that are really fun to play. Um, Spider Man, which we'll get into in a bit, is like incredible on the PS5, uh, and that's from someone who played it first on the PlayStation 4. Uh, it is quite literally, it's like night and day. I'm not saying like you're missing out on too much if you're playing it on PlayStation 4. Like I think you're still gonna have a good time with the game, and there's still a lot to enjoy. But all the upgrades you get with the PlayStation 5 are very noticeable. Yeah. Uh, and and are really really good. Uh, so yeah, it's super solid. I mean, big ups to PlayStation with what they've done with this console. I think the only sort of complaints that some people have is just the sheer size of this thing. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, it, it is massive. Um, but besides that, yeah, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with the PlayStation Five. Yeah, I feel like when you jump into, so just actually for full disclosure, um, Steve did receive a yes. console for review. Mm -hmm. Myself and Caboose, we also have a PlayStation 5. Malik, I believe you're Not still yet. waiting. Yeah, you're waiting still for waiting. that upgrade. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, based on like my experience with the PlayStation 5, it does feel like you're going into next gen. Um, and that's that may have to do with like the new factor, right? Like when you get a console, you do want it to feel new. Um, so you get a new UI, right? It looks different, yep. it feels different. The controller is quite different, um, which we'll talk more about. Um, and yes, the launch lineup is good. I actually pulled up here from a games radar, a comparison uh, for previous launch titles on previous PlayStations. Yep. So I'm just gonna run through them. For the PS1, uh, you had Rayman, you had NBA Jam Tournament, oh, good game. Um, game. Street Fighter, the movie. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> PlayStation 2, you had uh, Dead or Alive 2. You had, and I'm just naming a few here, Street sure. Fighter, EX3, uh, Tekken Tag. So yeah, and then in the three, you had Call of Duty 3, uh, most notably NBA 2K7. Mm. Uh, Oh, Tony Hawk's Project 8. Um, <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation 4, you had Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, uh, Call of Duty Ghost, uh, FIFA uh. 14, Just Dance 2014, NBA 2K14. Yeah, so you know what, Steve? Looking at this list of like all of the previous launch titles, I do agree with you. At first, I was like, is it? Is it really? Because it's so far away uh, back that we have to kind sure. of look. But I think you're right. These are pretty solid titles. You do have um, Demon Souls, right? Um, mm -hmm. Spider-Man's a really great game. You could include Watchdog and Assassin's Creed, but it is a great lineup, I think, for um, next gen if you're including like Assassin's Creed and Watchdogs. But yeah. for PlayStation, for Demon Souls and um, Spider Man as well. So, and even Astro's Playroom. Can we just talk about that? Can for we please? Yes. Yes. Because yes. that a game. is such. Oh my god a great game that is just packaged right in with the console. And I miss the days of getting a great experience from just the box alone, like just opening yep. that box and with whatever you have in there, you're getting a great experience off the bat. And I think that you nailed, you nailed it right there by calling it a game. Uh, a lot of people would be quick to just say, well, it's a demo. It's just showing you the, the controller, giving you a, a brief uh, look at like what the haptic triggers or haptic feedback would be and the triggers, uh, do and but it's so much more than that it's an actual game with yes really cre uh, creative levels in there um and honestly if you're jumping in as someone who might have just been a pc player or a switch player or xbox whatever and you're jumping mm -hmm. into that game and you're getting such a great history into playstation through each level like man, I, I was smiling ear to ear just going through it i i thought it was I, great i think even like as to, to classify it as like a tech demo it's like 
like even to say that i feel it does such a great job at showing right. you what the console is capable of especially what this thing is yes. capable of when i played spider-man you get a glimpse of it um there's there's one moment i remember uh, when I first started playing Spider-Man on, on PS5, I started a brand new save and the very opening of the game, like super, super minor spoilers, but like the very opening of the game, you're on a subway, like you're on a subway ride and you get off the subway. And I'll never forget, I'm holding the controller and you literally feel like the bumps of a train slowing down in the controller. Now, yes. granted, for the rest of my experience, it, it wasn't too noticeable what the haptic feedback was doing for Spider-Man. The adaptive triggers, you get a little bit of that resistance. But then I jumped on Astro's playroom. Oh, so you played Spider-Man first, then Astro. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. So, so let me. So ask. then I jumped on Astro and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was blowing <laughs> my mind. Yeah. It was blowing my mind. Yeah, every like, footstep your character takes. Yes. So the cool. little, little tiptoes. It's so, it's so, it's so cool. cool. And then Malik, I know you have a question in there, but I just want to squeeze this in. I had the complete opposite experience of you. Me too. So I started mm. with Astro's Playroom and I was completely blown away by the haptic feedback of that control. I do yeah. have to say the control um, at first for me, so I'm a, I, I don't even have the control here. I'll grab it for the later half when we actually talk about the control, but mm -hmm. I hold my controller with my, um, I'm like, what what fingers are these? My peace fingers, my pointer <laughs> finger, and my index finger, my middle finger, sorry, on the triggers, right? Peace yeah. fingers. <laughs> my peace fingers. My peace fingers. Um, so I, I hold it like that. Like I hold the controller like that. Okay. So for me, it was a bit uncomfortable. But what made me forget about that is the haptic feedback. Like the little tiptoes, just little movements. It was really, uh, really cool. Um, the resistance in the trigger uh, buttons, like it, it was such a cool experience that when I went to Spider-Man, I was a bit disappointed because um, I just felt like, oh, they're just showing this off, but but we're not getting that in this game. And I had to remind mm -hmm. myself, I think that's because Spider-Man also came out for the PlayStation 4. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yes. So they didn't really build it kind of from the ground up with the haptic feedback and, and yeah. the PlayStation controller in mind. Obviously, mm -hmm. they did a lot in terms of like making it feel upgraded on the PlayStation 5. But when it comes to the controller, yeah, it, it, it's lacking there. But I mean, just in general, like th to have a little bit there, I guess for me, it was a cool experience because you still feel something different and something yes. new out of the controller than you would have otherwise. Yeah. Um, and I liked that. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, the, now this thing, like it's going to be my new favorite thing every time a game comes out. I'm going to be like, how does it, what does a controller do? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, now, Malik, yeah, I know you had a question. <gasps> oh my God! Every because you, you have the mechanic Caboose's of trying face. to you have the mechanic of trying to balance, right? So mm -hmm. then add haptic feedback to that, and it's just so much more immersive that maybe yeah. even Caboose may like the game. I'm gonna feel like I'm actually walking thousands of miles. <laughs> 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 Exactly yeah, you can feel you every rock yeah. in the yeah. controller, every, yeah. every step. Yeah. I can't wait to climb a mountain for three hours, only to fall off at the peak of it. And yeah. all I really feel like you're carrying that baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you're going to hear the baby the cry up. from the controller. It'd be so I've cute. Done. I, that's, I always turn off controller speaker. I don't know about you guys. Oh, okay. We're, we're going to like talk it. about the controller. Okay. Let's, okay. let's hold off talking about the yeah. controller. I know Stealth Gamer <laughs> sure. in chat also has controller questions, but okay. we'll come back to that um, when we specifically speak about the controller. I kind of want to stay on track. I know, okay. Malik, you did have so, a question. Yeah. Okay. So with the PS4, they had Knack, which was technically a game, but felt like it was more supposed to be a tech demo. Yeah. And now it seems kind of switched with Astro. Like they intended it as a tech demo, but it actually turned out like as a, a you know, a genuine experience. I, yeah. Do you guys think that that shows a lot of like growth and development for PlayStation or like, what does that kind of mean to you guys for this going into this next generation? I 100% I, I agree. I think they've kind of toyed around with Astro as being a quote unquote mascot for PlayStation. And I feel like this just propelled that. So let, uh, yeah, it solidifies him as a mascot. I could see a bunch more Astro games that would be enjoyable. I think because Astro, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not too familiar with Astro in particular, but I believe it was VR that he was, was introduced, game, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. you already are gatekeeping who has access 
to Astro. And I think that's what was stopping um, Astro from potentially becoming like this figure for mm -hmm. PlayStation as a whole. But with Astro's Playroom now, I could like this is giving me Mario vibes, like the little coins mm -hmm. that you're collecting. Like I could actually play yeah. through a game and I feel like I will really enjoy it. It reminded me a lot of uh, Super Mario Galaxy when I first yeah. saw like clips of it. It looks really good. Yes. Yeah. And the amount of Easter eggs in that game. Holy. Yes. Really? The nostalgia yeah, that they yeah. just like are poking at. Uh, PlayStation, I think, especially knew with Astro what they were doing. Exactly. They, know, they were speaking to longtime PlayStation fans to put those yeah. Easter eggs in there. Yeah. And I do think they paid off. Well, even when, when you first boot it up and like your hub world is straight up like you're inside the PlayStation 5, uh, oh. different different stages that you go to, one's like the GPU, one's the SSD, one's the controller, you know, like it's it's so cool. It's so cool the way like, honestly, for, for a free game that you'll get no matter what, no matter what PlayStation 5 mm -hmm. you get your hands on for that. Like it's one of the coolest bundled in games I think mm -hmm. uh, like I've ever played. Sit mostly because of what it does for the controller, but as sure. well just because it's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's just it's yeah. a good fun mm -hmm. lighthearted. It's a game. good time. It's a good time. Yeah. Ang and Chad, uh, Ang five hundred one zero five asks, how do you guys feel about the little card system thing they have when you hit the PlayStation button? The, I think he's talking about the user, like the interface. Right, mm. I like think the that's activities. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Those are cool. I, I I like them. Uh, in you know the small amount of games I I've played uh, so far, I think it's a cool addition. I don't see myself using it very often, to be honest. Uh, yes. The only thing I do like, uh, but that's just because of my playstyle. I always chase after trophies. Is mm -hmm. the fact that trophies will be listed there so it's just like a quick access hit the button and see what my next trophy is or see what i have to do uh to get the next trophy but otherwise i could take it or leave it i'll tell you why i like it uh and and i tried this out for spider-man specifically mm -hmm. um although i don't know i don't know how to get this consistently because sometimes i'll boot up spider-man miles morales and i'll get the uh the title cards and sometimes i won't i'll go straight to the main menu um but when you use the activity things and mm -hmm. it's spider-man and let's say you picked uh like random crimes as one of the activities so then mm -hmm. it's not one of like the main missions that it'll thrust you in it'll just throw you into the open world it's pretty much like having quick resume for the playstation 5 at okay. least in, in but but again i've never gotten this to to work consistently because sometimes i'll click the activity but it'll mm -hmm. still go through like the title card it'll be like sony interactive entertainment right. it'll show the insomniac logo and then it'll throw me into the game but other times It'll be, I click the activity, black screen for like three seconds, I'm in the open world. Like, just like that. So with that, because you uh, made the quick comparison to Quick Resume. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was one thing off the bat that going into the PlayStation 5, I was looking for that feature that would kind of be the Quick Resume for PS5. Right. Mm -hmm. What is that for you guys? Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, I, I, honestly, it might just be that activity thing. Like, unless you're talking just in general, what's a feature for the PlayStation that okay. kind of rivals the, that of Quick Resume? Yeah, the standout feature. Well, let's actually, let's go to the first one. Do you think that the cards is pretty much like Quick Resume? Like, the in terms of loading times, because loading times are significantly cut down as well. Sure. Yeah. PlayStation 5. Yeah. Um, do you think, you know, maybe Xbox packaged it as Quick Resume, but that's kind of what we're getting with Next Gen all around? I mean, the cards don't, they definitely don't specifically give you the exact feeling of Quick Resume. Because Quick Resume right. is literally, if I was standing in a specific spot playing, I don't yeah. know, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I got out of the game and played, went to another game, I could jump back into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I could literally be like mid-jog when I <laughs> left it, and I will continue that same jog going back into the game. With PlayStation, you don't get that exact experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still in like a checkpoint spot when I load into the open world and it may not even be anywhere near where I was originally when I got off the game. Um, that being said though, like the load times are so fast. They're so much faster than the, the previous console generation that I feel like you're just going to feel that upgrade no matter what, you know, mm -hmm. even if you're going manually through the entire menu system of Spider-Man or any game that you might be playing and then jumping into your save it's so quick. You're, you'll be in game within 30 seconds. Like, yeah. 
guaranteed. Unless you're playing a Rockstar game, there's still a bit of loading time there. Um, you're going to be in the game in like 30 seconds and playing and ready to go. So, like, it, obviously, in the direct comparison with Crooked Room, like Xbox has the upper leg, but I think. With PlayStation, like just having Next faster loading, yeah, it's just, it. yeah, it's just cool. It's just cool to have faster loading across the board. So, is this is this more of a the is the quick resume something that's been designed into the Xbox and into the games versus the yes. PlayStation's is kind of based on power? Do you think that we could see that kind of slowing down Xbox games or kind of hurting development if they have to work with the quick resume or if there are bigger games, will it hurt them? Because if the PlayStation Five has the processing power and then they just work on bringing quick resume in do you mm-hmm. think xbox can like hold up to that i think I don't- so only only because um a, a fraction of the ssd is already dedicated to those operating systems that are in the background mm-hmm. uh, maybe maybe by the end of the generation where we see like true true next generation games coming in, into the fold that's when it will start uh, to be affected. But honestly, I, I think that they were forward thinking enough to be like, this is yeah. the plan and we're going to we're gonna push this. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like there's just so much ability with Quick Resume. And we've talked about this when we kind of gave a rundown of the Xbox Series X. Like, mm-hmm. I just processing, imagine Watch Dogs, but imagine it in a sense where you're going to Quick Resume into a character's experience and then you could Quick Resume into another character's experience. Like, yeah. I think there's so much that could be done there with what Xbox did that it it just opens so much possibilities. And I mm-hmm. think that's a separate thing for Xbox. I think PlayStation does have other features like the controller that make it stand out, yeah. that could give developers another um, way to really make their games feel immersive. Mm -hmm. no i I definitely agree i think that piece of heart we'll talk about it more once we get into like the controller section of the show but i really think that's the next generation feature yeah definitely all right um i i know we have to move on to spider-man but i do want to talk about the fact that you know the playstation release you mentioned steve the availability kind of worn it down how playstation even announced pre-orders that was kind of flurry um of a mess but now we're hearing reports of crashes where we're hearing reports of like issues with the playstation 5. i don't know if any of you guys have experienced any of these issues i personally have which, you know, when you get a new new console, um, regardless if it's a new gen console or just like just straight out of the box, you expect it to be working and functioning properly. So that's why I was kind of caught off guard when I was going through my setup process and transferring my PlayStation 4 files to my PS5. And I got a crash right into that moment. Um, I had to start up the console again and start from scratch on the setup. Like it took me, it completely did a, a factory reset on wow. the console. So every input, I, I connected my PS Plus membership, everything. And mm-hmm. I had to redo all of that, which, you know, it didn't take much time, but it was just surprising. It got me a little nervous to tell you the honest <laughs> truth. I thought we were in like an Xbox ring of death situation, you know, <laughs> ring of death. Um, and then again, I'm playing with uh, Spider-Man. I got a crash on there. Uh, during a cutscene, uh, so I, I want to know if you guys experienced any of these issues. How do you guys feel about players experiencing this? Yeah, so I was playing Spider-Man Remastered the other day. Uh, had now, okay, I don't know if this was the console or if this was the outlet that it was plugged into, um, because mm-hmm. the outlet that I have my PlayStation Five plugged into right now, I've had an issue before with other things being plugged into it, mm-hmm. shutting off with I don't know just other appliances in the house, something wrong with. Science, I don't know, electricity. Science. <laughs> Science. It's, it's um, hard, yeah. uh, so, but I, I did have the console just straight up shut off. Like I'm swinging and, and remastered and black screen consoles off. Uh, and then I had another instance where Spider-Man remastered crashed. But outside of that, it's been perfectly fine. No issues. Uh, I haven't had any crashes with Miles Morales or any other game that I had been playing on the PS5 yet. Um, and I'm assuming that the crash was like an anomaly and not something I'm going to expect to see consistently. At least I hope so, because these things are hard to come by and I'm not going to try and get a relate replace like a replacement right now. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm all good here. And that that was just like a once in a blue moon occurrence. 
uh, but I have experienced it. Mm-hmm. Have you guys gotten that uh, Q error that uh, with the downloading that people have been facing, where uh, kind of stuff just gets stuck in their queue? No. So no, no. Okay. What? Yeah, people are oh, having I've an heard issue about where they yeah, go to queue this. something up to download, and it just like is forever downloading, but it's not actually like it's stuck in the queue, but it's not actually. Oh, not actually downloading. So then yeah. they have to cancel out and then re-download uh, it. Yeah, like, yeah, that again. seems to be the issue. Only one person that I know of confirmed they let the download go fully, and even though it said it was still downloading, it had the file and it was actually a corrupt file, so they had to mm-hmm. completely delete it and then redo oh. the download. But yeah, I, it, I'm not sure if that's been fixed yet or not. But I know that that is an issue people are having. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I've I've had a, like a pretty clean experience. Uh, the only thing that kind of went wrong, and this is probably on my part uh, altogether, was when I was setting up the the console, it asked if I wanted to transfer all my data from PS4. I was like, cool, let's do it. Uh, I selected which uh, games I wanted to bring over. Um, and then it said, okay, it's going to be an estimated four hours to do this. I was like, oh, no, okay. a long time. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just let it, let it play out and everything. After six hours, it was still doing it on my PS4, but nothing was happening on my PlayStation uh, 5. So I, I figured everything was okay. So I shut it all down. I was like, cool, we're good. And then I booted up my PS5 again and nothing transferred over. So hmm. it's not the end of the yeah. world. I can transfer those yeah. over later, but it was kind of just one of those things where it was like, what? what's going point? on? Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't really know, but yeah, I, I really feel for those that are having these issues go on. It really sucks, especially when you yeah. pull the new thing out of the box and you're like, awesome. Let's uh, let's get to playing with friends and everything, and then one thing happens, and it sucks. But it's kind of almost expected with every new console. I feel like something yeah. always happens. Yes, yeah. it's it's like it's like a game release. Um, when the game, I mean, granted that they obviously want to make sure more than a game that <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, because it's a way bigger investment, but like a game release, you just you cannot put one out, or you cannot put it out to millions of people and have it be the perfect experience top to bottom for every single person. Um, You know, like I feel long are the days of the red ring of death, Xbox 360 era. Let's hope. At least hopefully (laughs) we'll see. Um, But right now that seems to be the case that like, yeah, there are some people who are unfortunately having some issues with their console and like, I don't want to say, like, oh, tough luck. Like, that sucks. That that genuinely sucks. I know for me, if I bought, if I got this console and it arrived busted, like, I would, that would be annoying. That, that would, I would be pissed. All the know? expletives would be coming yeah. out. Of yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, but, and I, I think it's it. more what Sony does to help um, reconcile all these yep. issues. Like if they're showing that they're supporting their customers who are experiencing this, like I know um, from a friend of mine who experienced something similar to me, they are they had to send their PlayStation completely back and they, <laughs> they unfortunately don't know when they're getting it back um, or if they're getting a new console. So that could be really frustrating, especially if you were mm-hmm. able to secure a pre-order ahead of, you know, when more become available. So if they're able to really work with their customers that are experiencing this or all the gamers that are experiencing this and give them support, patch it, like figure out with solutions and be clear and transparent about it, I Mm -hmm. think it's still successful in the end. Yeah. Yeah, in the long term, yeah. How is, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Camille. Oh, no, I was just about to say we're like running out of time. I want to move on to the next one. But oh. if you want to squeeze in your question real quick. I was just going to ask about storage because I know that already Xbox uh, has like their first party storage solution. Um, people have been kind of complaining about the PlayStation 5 storage. Do they have? A, can you use an external hard drive like a third party or does it have to be? Because they don't have a first party hard drive yet to expand the storage. Yeah, right. Um, I'm not sure. I, I haven't I'm, not too many games I'm not sure, but I... Yeah, but I do know Call of Duty is like one of those games that are oh, freaking beasts. So I, I've been playing Warzone on it um, and Modern Warfare because every Monday is my cruise. We do our multiplayer mm. private matches. 
And it's a beast. Like, it's a lot. Um, I right. actually have to delete some things I just downloaded <laughs> on my PlayStation to fit other things. Right. So I'm going to have to look at storage solutions. I'll have to get back to you guys on, like, what I find, what's the best solution. Or if, chat, right. if you know what's a good solution for storage, then then hit me up. Um, so, so to answer your question, um, prior to the release, Sony did say that they're not prioritizing um, their own SSD as of right now. That's not, like, an imminent solution i don't i don't really get it either um maybe they just I, figured there was enough in there i think but they're gonna being, put it to someone else because i, I figured that as boxes well. is expensive it's like yeah. 200 bucks right and it, I, is. it is it is and i think that's good to not prioritize or come out with um like sony to release their own private ssd because the prices will be driven up um right. and then it gives players less opportunity to find solutions around it yeah. um yeah. But in terms of what the best external hard drive is, I, I don't know. I'm curious about that. So if anyone has any solutions, please let me know because I'm running yeah. out of space and <laughs> I'm into Cold War right now. And it's a lot now with Modern Warfare. It's a lot. Okay? I get you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right there with you. And yeah, I really want something uh, external just to, to beef that up. Um, yeah. But I have noticed that some people are saying that some of the crashes they're experiencing are because of Sorry. certain hard drives. Yeah. Certain hard drives oh, that yeah. they're plugging yeah, into earlier, and yeah. then transferring yeah. data in. And, and if the PlayStation 5 is reading any of that data, it's it just, it crashes. Um, uh, yeah. So, really user be warned. I'm just yeah. going to put it out there. Just mm. be warned if you're throwing anything else in there uh, to beef it up.